Okay, let me tell you about this map. Uh, I love to show this map to, for, to people who know nothing about uh, the Middle East because they can't find Israel. They can't find it. I said, I don't know, where is it? Well, yes, of course, you need to a magnifying glass to realize that it's right here. But interesting question. Are there other countries in the Middle East that are actually smaller than Israel? Yes. Which one? What? Qatar is one, absolutely. San Marino is not in the Middle East. Uh, Oman, yes. No, no, Oman is, is, this is Oman. It's big. Yeah. <laughs> Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi is part of the United Emirates. So, no, I wanted you to say Lebanon. Lebanon is really, really small. As you can see, it's right here. And yes, uh, Qatar is definitely another one. There's, you could say Kuwait, but anyway. Just so you keep Dubai, absolutely. So keep in mind, Israel is very, very small, but it's not the only one. Um, we have to keep to, to, be, to be objective about this. There you go. All right, so we can skip a uh, roll through this because I already um, told you everything. You already know. 198 countries, 193 in the UN, Christian about 100, 56 Muslim, non-Christians 35 Arab countries, and bang, one Jewish country. Okay, this is where I wanted to go, what happened here. Okay, the Egyptian, oops, yeah, um, the Egyptians were replaced by the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Greeks, the Romans, the Byzantines, the Persians, the Arabs, the Crusaders, the Ottoman Turks, the British, and finally the Israelis. <laughs> Okay, so this is the animation that I was dying to show you and I'm really, really uh, disappointed that I can't, but maybe I'll have another opportunity another time. Let's move on to the next one. Here is the most important point that I want to make. The Arabs will tell you Israel, the, the Jews were out of Israel uh, in 70 after BC and um, they have never been there anymore. They don't have any right to the Holy Land. Not true. There always were Jewish communities all through the centuries, all through the different invaders and uh, conquerors that stayed in Israel, in the Holy Land, and maintained the deep connection of the Jewish people with the Holy Land. I think it's very important to, uh, to make that point clear whenever you hear someone saying, oh no, they're just invaders. Um, I'll, I'll get back to that later. Yep, next. This is what the David and Solomon kingdom looked like. Doesn't look like Israel today, does it? Israel is here. So what country is this that... It's Syria. The, the, almost all of Syria was part of what was at the time the uh, kingdom of uh, David and Solomon. Uh, I'm not saying that Israel should get back to that size. Nobody's interested in that, but just to give a sense of perspective again, historically, once upon a time, it was actually a lot bigger than what it is today. Yes. <clears throat> and this is the kingdom of Herod uh, at the time of uh, Jesus and uh, after his death. And as you can see again, there's a good chunk of Syria here, a good chunk of Jordan, and it was a lot bigger than, than what it is today. Let's move on to the next one. All right, this is a very important map because you hear the Palestinians saying very often, we, Palestine has always existed. You heard this in the video before. Not true at all. Do you see anything that says Palestine here? Of course not. This is an empire. The, the, when you have an empire, the only borders you look at are the outside borders. So that, notice that a, a good chunk of Europe was under Ottoman rule for a long time, by the way. Greece, Bulgaria, Macedonia, all these states uh, were under uh, Ottoman um, rule. Then it went all the way here, all the way. It doesn't take the, uh, what is today Saudi Arabia, the, at least not the center, and all of North Africa. The Ottoman Empire was a huge place, but there were no states inside of it. So let's move on to the next one. The, uh, the, at most what you had, like every country in the world, you have provinces, you have states, you have uh, what we have, counties, you have administrative divisions. That is understandable. That's all you had over there. There's nothing that said that there was a state of Palestine. 
nor a Jewish state for that matter. Since David and Solomon and since Herod, there has not been uh, another state until the creation of, the, of Israel in 1948. Next. So this is the important uh, um, part. When the uh, colonial powers, primarily Britain and France, one defeated the, the Turks at the end of World War I, they decided to uh, share basically the Middle East like they did for most of the rest of the world. That's what colonial powers do. And uh, basically, you know, settle in, in those countries, but they arbitrarily drew the line of the different countries. Let's look at the next one. And here is, whoops, here is probably the most important thing that I would like for you to remember, is the fact that the fact that Israel was created in 1948, but look at this. Lebanon was created in 1946. Did you know that? Syria in 1946. Iraq in 1932. Jordan 1946. Egypt 1920s. I mean, all these countries were uh, created around the same time. So people who say, oh, Israel came from Europe as a, as a colonial power, it doesn't make any sense at all when you hear that because actually Israel is the result of the co colonial expansion uh, after the fall of the Ottoman Empire. And how did that happen? Exactly. Balfour Declaration, what is that? Lord Balfour, uh, who was close to the British Foreign Office, um, was uh, a friend of uh, Chaim Weizmann, who became the first president of Israel. Um, and he suggested to the British government that, well, while we are, you know, redividing the whole Middle East after the defeat of the Ottomans, why don't we put aside a little chunk of land for the Jews? Because they have been basically a vagabond uh, people all over the world for 2,000 years. And it's time for them to reconnect with their roots. And uh, the British government endorsed that proposal, submitted to the uh, League of Nations. At the time, it was the League of Nations, not the UN. And the Le League of Nations also endorsed it. Uh, so we thought, the Jews thought, great, now finally we'll have our own country. Uh, but if you look at this map, that's not what Israel looks like today, does it? So what happened? What happened was that in 1922, the British arbitrarily and illegally, uh, although they had it approved later by the League of Nations, chose to chop off about two-thirds of this territory which was put aside for the, for the Jewish people and give it to someone else. So who was that someone else? Jordan, yes, but how did that happen? Very interesting story. How many of you have seen um, Lawrence of Arabia, the movie? Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. You know that he negotiated with the Saud family because the Saudis were helping the British defeat the Turks. And even though they actually didn't do much fighting, they claimed that after the war, since the Turks were defeated, they wanted payback. And at the time, the, Saudi, the Saudis were not the king of Saudi Arabia. They were just one of the dominant tribes. Who were the king? The king was, in, uh, was the Hashemite dynasty. They, uh, they claimed to descend directly from the prophet, and they were, their official title was guardians of the holy sites of Mecca and Medina. So the British had a problem because they had made promises to the Saudis, they had made promises to the uh, Hashemites, they had made promises to everybody, and they were contradictory promises. So how do you get out of that problem? Well, they thought, oh, wait a minute, we give too much land to the Jews. Let's get a piece out of that, and we'll give it to one of the Hashemites' sons, and uh, another one, which became Iraq, we'll give to the other son. And that's what happened. So. Problem solved, the Saudis became the big kahuna in Saudi Arabia. The Jordanians were created, a Jordanian dynasty, and uh, the, the one left holding the bags were the Jews because they had all of a sudden a country that was a third of what they had been promised initially, and uh, they were not allowed to migrate here in, in what is now today Jordan. All right, so, um, now wait a minute. Yeah, here, thank you. We, you saw this in the video, but it's worth mentioning it because there are a couple of additional things that I want to add here. 
in um, uh, the Arabs and the Jews, because there were Arabs and Jews in what is today Israel, uh, did not get along. There were cases where they did, but by and large, the extremists on the Arab side were always uh, making trouble, especially for the British. The British were the um, mandate authority, and they were constantly attacked by the Arabs, <clears throat> and so also uh, sometimes by the Jews. So they wanted to get out of there. And they came up with a plan. Lord Peel, one of the British lords, said, why don't we just divide the place and give it to two people? So they chose to give this to the Arabs, and this only, this tiny little piece to the Jews, with an international zone from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, so it would be an internationally ruled uh, area. As you saw in the video, we know the results. The Jews said, well, that's not exactly what we had in mind, but it's better than nothing, so we'll take it. And the Arabs started what they have continued to do to this day, which is to use only one word. Anybody knows how to say no in Arabic? Okay, you're going to learn something today. La. La. That's no. And that's the only word that they seem to know. Because to every proposal, ever since, every single one, they have always said no. They just don't even want to admit that the Jews have a right to, 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 be, to be living there. So, in a sense, what I find extremely ironic when I, I look at this whole history is that the Arabs have made a, one, have given one present after another to the Jewish people. Because imagine, imagine for a second that they had said, okay, that's a good deal, we'll take it. This is what Israel would look like today. This tiny little thing. So in a sense, the Arabs refusing to get to take that deal was to the benefit, uh, to the, the, to the uh, benefit of uh, Israel and to the Jewish people. So that was shell. It didn't work. They said, la. Next. Uh, ten years uh, later, so they went to the United Nations, which in the meantime had been created in 1945. Anybody knows where, by the way? Yes, very good. The UN was created in San Francisco in 1945. Remember this. Uh, I guess you could say that. <laughs> um, so the UN sends a committee to explore the situation and to come up with a plan. And their plan is, let's divide these two people because they really cannot get along. <clears throat> Long before LA, it was already a motto that they can't get along. So. Um, you look at this map and you go, wait a minute, what were these people smoking? Are you out of your mind? You want to create two, two countries that are intertwined like this? There, there's nothing like this in the world. So guess what happened? Once again, the Jews said, how do you say yes in Hebrew? Ken. In Arabic it's Iowa, but you never hear it, so never mind. In Hebrew, it's Ken. The Jews said, Ken, we'll take it. And the Arabs said, La. La. Absolutely. Not only did they say, La, they immediately went on the attack. Five armies attacked Israel with the declared goal of wiping out the Jewish people and destroying the newly born state of Israel. Unfortunately for them, it didn't work out as planned. There are some fascinating books to, uh, to explaining why it didn't work out. Well, they didn't know the meaning of the word coordination between armies. So it's another story. It's a fun one to, to study. So anyway, they lost and Israel at the end of the war looked like this. Ah, now that's a lot more coherent. And oh, uh, can we go back uh, a couple, the other map? Here's something that you, uh, you want to know also. No, the, uh, the next one. Thank you. Uh, he, today, the uh, pro-Palestinians tell you that was an unfair map because look at it. There were many less Jews in the uh, pa British mandated Palestine at the time than there were Arabs, which is true. And look, they got so much more territory in blue for the Jews. And I said, yeah, but what do we have in the south here? We have a Negev desert. Nobody lived there. 
So quit complaining. You got a lot more of lands that can be uh, uh, cultivated, especially in the Galil, in the north, at the West Bank, and uh, Gaza. Back to the other map. So Israel, nope, oh, Israel won, and as the video was telling you also, Egypt seized Gaza and kept it until 1967, and the West, and, and Jordan seized the West Bank and East Jerusalem, from which they evicted all the Jew, all the Jews, and they destroyed 49 synagogues. Destroy them or defile them. So, at the end of 67, Israel said, okay guys, um, no, excuse me, uh, uh, we're, 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 yeah, we were still in 48. So, uh, something that the, 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 the film, uh, the video made abundantly clear is that the Jordanians had ample time to create a Palestinian state here from 1948 to 1967 when they lost it and nobody ever mentioned it. It's only when Israel regained it. Next uh, slide. Oh, uh, before I get back to that, yes, I have to talk about this because it's an important issue that keeps popping up, coming up all the time. The Palestinians claim that 650,000 of them were chased out during the War of Independence. They talk of the War of Independence as the Nakba, the catastrophe. Uh, there's one guy here in San Diego who goes around, a Palestinian who goes lecture, gives lectures, and uh, I cornered him once in public and said, he keeps saying, in 1948, there was a war. And I keep asking him, what do you mean there was a war? Wars don't happen just like that. You wake up one day, you have your cup of coffee, and the next moment you're in a war. It doesn't happen. What happens is that someone attacks someone else. That's how wars happen. So can you tell me who attacked who? Oh, well, you know, it was a defensive war on the part of the Arabs. Yeah, five armies attack Israel. That's a defensive war. Uh, and, and they declared on their radios that they wanted to wipe out the Jews, that they were going to destroy everything. That's a defensive war. So uh, it's a little bit of a joke when you hear them say that. But anyway, they lost. And Israel was not going to let all these people come back because they were like a fifth column. And so they became refugees. They are still there today. Them from 1948 and their descendants, which is more than 4 million people. You do the math, 650,000, 4 million today. Incidentally, uh, that takes care of the accusation of genocide because usually when there is a genocide, the numbers tend to go down, uh, not up. So. They are still today in 59 camps run by one UN agency, United Nations agency. The, the UN is, is, oh, I'll talk about this in the second part, so I'll, I'll skip that for now. Uh, now, the other aspect of the problem that you never hear about is you keep hearing about the Palestinians over and over again because they're still in the refugee camps 64 years later. But what about the Jewish refugees? And people tell me, what Jewish refugees? Well, here's what happened. After 1948, the Arabs, the, 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 the collective uh, uh, Arab world, was so humiliated because here they have five armies and they were defeated by a scrappy little army that was not even a regular army uh, by the Jews on top of it. Uh, they were really, really humiliated, but they couldn't go back on the attack since they had just been defeated. So they wanted to do something to, you know, regain their honor. What do you think they did? They did the most unhonorable thing possible. They looked around and they, they went, oh, wait a minute, we all have Jews in our countries and we can get back at them, even though these Jews had nothing to do with Israel. So here you have 800,000 Jews over the next 10 years that were evicted from all these Arab countries. And these were Jews that had been there for centuries Jewish families that had been in the, that were part of the fabric of these countries. They spoke Arabic. They, the only difference is that they uh, practiced Judaism. But um, you had a very large, a uh, quarter of a million from Morocco, a very large number from Iraq, Syria, I mean from everywhere, from Yemen. And all these people were evicted, lost everything. Everything was stolen from them. 
and uh, a good chunk went to North America, Europe, but about 600,000, the same number as the uh, Palestinian Arabs, went to Israel. This is present number two in my book, as far as the Arabs are concerned, to Israel. Because at the time, you need to remember how many people were in Israel. Half a million. There were only half a million Israeli citizens in, in those days. So, all of a sudden you have an influx of doubling, uh, that, uh, that doubles the population. Now you can imagine the nightmare uh, because the infrastructure was not there to in integrate 500,000 people, 600,000 people. So they lived in tents for a long time too, but they are not there today anymore. They were integrated, they're part of Israel, they are now representing roughly 50% of the Israeli population comes from North Africa and the Arab countries, and the other half from Europe. It's the difference between the uh, Ashkenaz and the uh, Sephardi.